Hello friends, this is Anna Sabramowitz. Now, today I wanted to do a little bit of a follow-up uh, for uh, a video that I shot yesterday. And the reason I shot that video yesterday is because I wanted to give people a little bit of an overview about, you know, what really uh, makes a great portfolio, in my opinion, from 10 years of looking at other people's portfolios, getting inspiration from other people's work, modeling other people's work, and also getting a whole bunch of people getting in touch with me saying, hey, can you check out my portfolio? I wanna work with you, or can you give me some advice? And so that was a great conversation and a ton of you took action and not only shared your portfolio or messaged me directly. So I'm working through that now. Now, there's another thing that's happening that's uh, quite important. And I just, I wanted you to, from the questions that came up and some of the things that have been said, I just wanted to follow up that video. And you might be asking, you know, Anna, why are you talking about portfolios? I thought you were into interactive storytelling. And that is true. But there's a ton of people in our group who are actually, uh, they, they've they been doing this kind of work for some time, let's say, or uh, they've seen something that they, they really want to design for themselves. And the piece that they design inside our membership is basically to showcase more work, more of the work that they want to do, which is creative, fulfilling, changes behavior, gets people a huzz, all those things, right? And that's super awesome and that's kind of the focus. So I've been looking at this for a long time and now with everybody really wanting to ramp up their portfolio while they have maybe some downtime, some people actually don't, they're busier than ever, then this is something that um, you can help with. And the other thing is that if you're designing quality things that impact people's lives and if e-learning is something that is now taking, we're taking it to the next level because we really want to impact people and they're going to be bombarded with stuff and you want to make your stuff relevant and make it stick out and make it valuable, then this is the time to invest in skills that will help you make that impact, right? Because there's going to be tons of stuff out there. There's going to be tons of people fighting for attention, especially in the e-learning space. But you want to make sure that these things are relevant to your learners. They're punchy, impactful, and make a lot of you know, difference. So, cause you don't want to waste your time, right? Or anybody else's time. You've only got this one life, right? So this specific video I wanted to shoot for the ladies in the house. And, uh, that's not to say I'm excluding any guys, but here's the reason I'm, I'm shooting this video and why I'm saying this is, this is portfolios and being a woman because, um, women by uh, default are more agreeable right? What does that mean? That means, and that, that doesn't mean that men are disagreeable. It just means that there's the majority of people who are most agreeable are women. And the majority of, uh, people who are most disagreeable fall, like it's a bell curve, right? It's, it's men. Anyways, I actually fall into the disagreeable category way more often than agreeable, but here's the thing that I've noticed in this, and this is not something that just, you know, it's anecdotal. It is actually scientifically proven. This is a study where uh, if a guy walks into, uh, a guy will evaluate his performance um, and then his boss evaluates his performance, they will be basically on par. If a woman evaluates her performance and then her boss evaluates her performance, the woman will evaluate her performance at a lower level. So we come in for some reason, especially with this portfolio piece, people undervalue their uh, especially more agreeable people, men or women, but mostly women, um, undervalue their skills. And I think one of the things that also makes them uncomfortable is because portfolio really is, and some people might feel that it's boasting, right? Like I'm, I'm tooting my own horn. The fact is, I want you to think about your portfolio this way. The portfolio is there for to help somebody else make an educated decision. The portfolio, so stop thinking about you, stop thinking about, um, you know, I'm gonna show off this, does this look like I'm showing off or it's not good enough. What I want you to just to think, especially for agreeable people who are conscientious, that also means that they're thinking about what other people are thinking and are considerate of them. Well, then I want you to think about it from their perspective, saying they're coming in and they're looking at this and they're trying to make a decision. Is this, is this somebody I wanna work with? Is, is this person credible? Is this person do good job? Uh, does this person um, think through things carefully? Does this person have attention to detail? Uh, does this person work well with others? 
Does this person love collaborating, collaboration? Um, is, is this person savvy? You know, are they adaptable? All of those things. And whatever you decide are your, your major qualities, you want your portfolio to represent that. So downplaying of those things is actually a detriment to the person who you're trying to help because they can't decide if you're a good fit. So you gotta make sure that your pro portfolio represents you and is an accurate representation of you. So then you're thinking, okay, well, Anna, um, good, good one. But then, you know, if I'm, how do I know that I'm downplaying myself? How do I know that my portfolio is not clear enough, not uh, that I'm actually not featuring, uh, you know, the fact that I do this and this is actually really good, but I can't see that because I'm always comparing myself to like, you know, Steven Spielberg, how can I do that? Well, here's some tips for you, okay? I want you, well, first off, I want you to develop, and think about this, develop elephant skin. You gotta decide. And right now you can do some evaluating because if you're sensitive to feedback, this is never gonna work because people are gonna look at your portfolio, right? If you want feedback. You gotta decide, do you have elephant skin or do you have paper skin? And it's kind of funny. One of the members um, in our interactive storytelling accelerator program, he posted, in our uh, community and he said, and he's got a script ready for us to review and so we did today. And he posted, he said, I just want you guys to know, this is so funny, that I had an analysis done and 23andMe said that I'm related uh, way back to an elephant. <laughs> so I have thick skin and uh, I can take all your feedback. Cause it's, it's you gotta be brave, right? But also that, uh, those pieces in that portfolio represent you in some way, your work, and they speak to the world about you. And so when somebody's giving you feedback, you might be like, oh my God, this is an attack on you. But you gotta distance yourself from that, right? Because that helps you become better. You gotta look at it objectively. And anyways, so develop that thin, th thick elephant skin, right? But then how do you how do you get that feedback? So this is what I what I suggest. Have someone look over your work that is in a like and this this is always a challenge because we like when you go to when you go to any of these uh, like threads people give you feedback right there and a lot of that feedback is bs like one they they're not in your profession they don't know what you did um they uh they don't understand the context of what you did and it's not that they're not trying to be helpful, they are, but they don't necessarily have the know-how or the experience to actually give you relevant feedback. So what you do need to do is find people who are professionals who understand the process and give them enough context that they can actually give you some insights and questions and um, probe you in a way to find out what's the reasoning behind this because, and then have, a, have them look at that. Uh, you know, maybe record that conversation with them so that you can uh, get some insights into where you need to improve or where you're good and you need to actually spell it out in your portfolio and actually say that, right? Um, and, and pick somebody who is, who's got a stake, who cares, right? But not in the way that like your mom cares, um, which is that they'll tell you anything to make you happy most times. Uh, and they'll be so very proud of you. I don't want you to pick those people. Pick people who you trust, but also are professionally peers, colleagues, and also who uh, will give you tough love, right? Now, that's why I said you have to choose carefully because a lot of us can get into this uh, crazy kind of, um, I don't know if you've ever been there, but if you go to those some of those challenges and things like that, right, that are happening online or you post something and you get like 25 likes, and you get 15 awesomes, sometimes that can make us fool us into thinking that we've created something um, that doesn't need refinement or that is good enough. And I dare say, if anybody says you should fix this or you should fix that or I don't like this, go for it, talk to those people because those are probably people who actually carefully looked at something and, it, and they, they were brave enough to give you that feedback. So look for those people. That's not to say that, you know, if somebody overwhelmingly loves it, um, it's not valuable, but I would say, okay, I love that you love it, but how can I make it better? Because there's always something, right? There's always something. 
And so if, if their feedback is, I love it, but you know what, I really don't understand the context of it. Like the interactivity is awesome, but like, you know, what are you trying to achieve or what are you leading them to? Or, you know, who did you collaborate with to design this? Who is your target audience? They're asking you all these questions. You're like, okay, this is the context I can add for, um, you know, this is the context I can add for my portfolio. And somebody asked, uh, because yesterday, hey, I'm glad, Tommy, I'm glad you're finding it uh, helpful. That's cool. Send me your portfolio, man, if you got one going. I'd love to check it out, give you some tough love. Um, so uh, one of the things that somebody asked, because I said, you know, your portfolio should really be kind of a representation of your best stuff. And then, um, you should, it shouldn't just be like a giant smorgasbord of everything you've ever done. Cause you really, you gotta curate it, right? You gotta find your best stuff, describe your best stuff, contextualize it for the person coming in so that they know who you are, what you do and why these pieces are represent basically the other work you want to do, right? They represent more of the stuff you want to do. And uh, somebody said, hey, you know, what if I chose four pieces that I've done because I've had a gamut of experience, let's say, and I have four pieces from different industries. And then you basically contextualize them so that everybody knows what these are about. And I say, you know, that's great. Write them up like case studies. Uh, take screenshots if you can't show things, you know, fully, but take screenshots to contextualize those things. What are the problems you're solving? What were the challenges? Like be honest, because people love to see people who have worked and thought through the process. If I just see a bunch of screenshots, and which is what I've seen in, in a very many portfolios where people just take screenshots and I'm like, okay, well, I know you know how to take screenshots, but how good, how much of this is yours? How much of this is actually have you thought through? Why did you make these decisions? So I want to know that stuff because really um, there will be people who will just look for the visual. That's fine. But if you're putting together something pro and somebody's looking for somebody pro, they're going to dig in deep. They're going to read. They're going to even read your case study to see if you know how to write. Right. Because it's, writing is a huge part of our um, uh, of our, our basically our process. Right. Script writing, communicating, writing technical materials, all that stuff. So you're showing, seeing just by having a portfolio that is able to describe a project, talk about the challenges, that alone shows so many pieces that you've got right up in your head. So think about that. Every single piece, right? It's kind of like, think about your portfolio as that Apple experience from the very unboxing, right? They're trying to make you feel something. So when somebody comes into your portfolio experience, What's the first thing that they see? What's the second thing that they see? What do you want them to focus on? If it's a smorgasbord of a mess of your paper clips <laughs> that you've gathered over the past decade, what's that saying about you, right? <laughs> so you gotta think that through, get feedback from somebody you trust, more than one person. It's if you're a woman, um, I would suggest you actually get feedback from a colleague, maybe who's male, <laughs> you know, just because they're a little more um, agreeable and they'll just tell you maybe, what's the truth, you know, without any kind of drama and accept it. Don't get personal or weird or sensitive. Just be like, okay, cool. And, and you choose the pieces. You don't have to go with all the pieces that they give you. You choose the pieces. But if you get consistent feedback from two or three people about the same thing, you're like, oh, maybe this is a, a, a blind spot that I have and I'm not catching it, right? So do that. Do the vetting process. Don't take one person's feedback as, as the facto, you know, this is, this is how I have to change everything because in the end, the portfolio is supposed to represent your personality. And you might be talking to people who would say, use of humor is inappropriate. Well, that's okay. That's not my personality. I like to actually, I think humor and laughter increases people's attention, right? So make sure you get that feedback across a couple of people. And in the end, you get to pick and choose what works for you. Be open-minded and baby, you're, you're golden. All right, so I hope this was helpful. I hope you have a fabulous rest of the day. Uh, if you want to learn more about the work that I do and the work that uh, my, my partner does, Ryan, um, go to elearningsecrets.com to register. I have a webinar coming up tomorrow. Uh, so you can uh, learn more about interactive storytelling and the kinds of pieces that I've built and my students have built to actually incorporate into the portfolio. So. Uh, hopefully you do that. Otherwise, post your comments in the chat if you have any questions, anything comes up, or if you want to share your portfolio, this is the time. Why not? Let the world know. All right. Take care, friends. Bye. Thanks so much for being here.